Greetings, precious one. I welcome you once again to my YouTube channel. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your love and support. May God bless you for subscribing and also sharing my videos. Um, it's my prayer that the good Lord will continue to uplift each and every one of you and give you success in your examination. Today um, is a new day and we are going to focus on a new topic. So the topic for our discussion today or the topic for the day is verifiable statement, confirmable statement, law-like hypothesis, Statistical hypothesis, predictive power of hypothesis, enumeration, and causal reasoning. So that is going to be our topic for the day. When you talk of a verifiable statement, verifiable statements are the same as particular statements. Please pay attention to this. In my previous video, I explained what a particular statement is. And I hope most of you know what a particular statement is. So a particular statement is not far from a verifiable statement. They are inextricably intertwined or they are bedfellows. They are together like husband and wife. So if you understand what a particular statement is, it's the same as what? A verifiable statement. A verifiable statement. So, when you talk of a verifiable statement, since you know it is, it is the same as particular statement, what is it? They are called evidence. Please pay attention. They can ask you. They can ask you this in your exams. So, pay attention. Partic uh, verifiable statements are called what? Evidence. Data. Okay? Test results. Observation reports. Or research findings. So, they are the same as what data evidence evidence test results observation reports or what research findings so that is um all about a verifiable statement they are what they are called verifiable statement because they have what a countable reference class it is what verifiable statement because it has a countable reference class and in my previous video i made reference to what a particular statement is of which i explained to you that it's a statement with what a countable reference class or a finite reference class which means that its reference class can be determined and as i told you earlier it is it is the same as what a, ver a verifiable statement a particular statement is the same as what? A verifiable statement. It can be defined as statements that are directly testable through what? Experience. Because it has what? A finite reference class. Okay, that is all about a verifiable statement. They are usually from what? Premise, premises of what? Inductive argument. Okay, so verifiable statement they are usually they, they usually what form the premises of what inductive argument they form premises of what inductive argument so let's um let me give you an example of a, a verifiable statement the person's passport has expired the person's passport has what expired it is what a verifiable statement because we are talking about one person here and this person we can identify him and we cannot count him he is only one person and as a result of that it becomes what a verifiable statement the table is green if i say the table is green it is what verifiable statement or a particular statement because we know uh, we are talking about one table here and since it is one table we can count it so please are, are you with me 
when you talk of a verifiable statement, before you before you be able to ascertain whether this is a verifiable statement or not, you first need to identify your reference class. You first need to identify your reference class, of which I said reference class is a person or the thing the, sub, uh, the sentence is talking about. If I say the table is green, we are talking about somebody here. We are talking about something. Eh? We are talking about something here. And that thing is what? A table. I said what? It is green. We are talking of it. So um, the table becomes what? My reference class. The first example I gave, I said the person's passport has a spy. We are making, a re we are making reference to what? Someone here. And that person's passport has what? Expired. So the person underlined the word, the, the, um, this, this word, that's a person. The person. So the person becomes what? My reference class. Okay, the remaining of the sentence that talks about the subject is also called an attribute class or a predicate. So pay attention to this. And it will it will guide you to identify your verifiable and a confirmable statement. So that is it. Another example: Johnson Praise is a worship leader. Johnson Praise is a worship leader. If I say Johnson Praise is a worship leader, it is a verifiable statement because we can identify Johnson Praise, and he's only one person. We are talking about only one person, and it makes it what a verifiable statement it makes it a verifiable statement another example the disease the disease is what contagious it is what a verifiable statement because we cannot it is we are talking of what a certain disease okay the disease okay the disease is what uh, confirmable sorry it's verifiable it's verifiable you can verify it uh, and, and 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 what it has what the the reference class can be what determine the disease okay another example of a verifiable statement is the liquid in the bowl is poisonous we are talking of what a certain liquid and since it can be determined it makes it what verifiable statement let's look at what a confirmable statement is a confirmable statement is um, really opposite to a verifiable statement. If it's a, a verifiable statement has a finite or countable reference class, then this one has infinite or an uncountable reference class. That is all about a confirmable statement. For example, or let me explain the concept to you. I've already explained, but they are the same as what general statements, and they are called hypotheses. Okay, confirmable statements are called hypotheses. Its reference class is what? Uh, its reference class is uncountable, and they are what? They are explained as statements that are indirectly tested testable through experience so it is indirectly testable through experience pay attention to this they can ask you in your exams they are indirectly tes um, testable through experience because their reference class are uncountable let me give you example of a confirmable statement example is all metals expand when heated. All metals expand when heated. It is a confirmable statement. Okay? It is a confirm. We are making reference to all metals. With metals, we have zinc. We have zinc. We have aluminum. We have copper. We have um, a lot of um, metals. So, with, with this statement, we are we are out. We have included all metals, and since we can't identify these metals, it is what it is um, a confirmable statement. It is a confirmable statement. It is making reference to 
every metal in the world okay so pay attention to this since its reference class is not it is it's not countable it is what a confirmable statement another example of a confirmable statement is few Ghanaians are allergic to pineapples few Ghanaians are allergic to what pineapple these few Ghanaians you won't be able to identify them okay few Ghanaians who are those Ghanaians how can we identify them that is the question how can we identify these Ghanaians since we can't identify these Ghanaians it becomes what a confirmable statement becomes a confirmable statement if I say all voters prefer a recount of ballots all voters prefer a recount of ballots it is what a confirmable statement because we are making reference to all voters which includes Chinese voters Nigerian voters US voters Ghanaian voters and what have you everyone that votes has been what included and with this we can't what identify these voters these voters and becomes what a confirmable statement another example let me give you a last example I say 80% of all retail stones are are not what real diamonds it is what a confirmable statement because um, we with this statement we are making an exception exception um, we say 80% then this 80% how will you be able to identify this 80% of um, retail stones mm? retail stones it will it will be very difficult for you to identify it okay it will be very difficult to identify and count it so it is what a, a confirmable statement and that the confirmable statement we have th um, three types of confirmable statement okay so we have a, a, the types of what confirmable statement so this um sorry um we have what two types of what confirmable statement there are two types of confirmable statement so under the confirmable statement we have law like hypothesis law like hypothesis and statistical hypothesis so we will throw more light of or we will throw more light on this statement pay attention to this i said confirmable statement has what um two types okay which is what law like hypothesis and then a statistical hypothesis so when you talk of a law like a law like hypothesis what is it what is a law like this one is a law like it's a confirmable statement or a general statement that has no exception that has no exception underline the word no exception underline these ways no exception okay when you say something has no exception it means um um it it, it, it has no limit okay it has no limit if if you if, if it's talking about a certain tribe it includes everyone in it for example if um if a sentence is talking about um Ghanaians it will say all Ghanaians okay if it's talking about um University of Ghana it will say all all University of Ghana staffs or all University of Ghana students or all university of ghana um all people from university of ghana you get it which includes the laborers the non-working staffs and then the staffs management and everybody is what included okay so um when you talk of a law like statement it has no exception it it includes everyone example of law like uh hypothesis is all metals expand when heated. I've already explained this statement to you that when you say all metals expand when heated, it means it, it includes what? Aluminium metal, zinc metal, copper metal. All metals are what? Included in it. And it, it what? 
he makes it what law like because he has no exception okay he has no exception it includes all metals all forms of metals in it and that is what that is um a law like hypothesis another example is all metals expand when heated with this example to after here that is if, another example is all living things require oxygen to live we are talking of what all living things here so if you if you if you are paying attention to me you realize that the law like statement it comes with words like all all a hundred percent okay hundred percent everyone so the moment you see uh, a sentence starting with some of these words then you should know that it is what a law like hypothesis because it has what no exception it won't talk about a part of the uh, part of a group and leave some it won't talk about a certain uh, uh, nation uh, people of what a country and leave some it won't talk about a uh, um, certain couples and leave some mm? if it, it, it won't talk about a certain politician or uh, some politicians and leave some pol uh, some out if it's talking about politicians it will say all oh, politicians if it's talking about Ghanaians say all oh, Ghanaians or a hundred percent of Ghanaians which each is what approximately toward all or if I say hundred percent it is it is the same as all or if I say everyone it's the same thing so that is all about law like hypothesis and another example is um all voters all voters hate Pakosi Hindu all voters hate Pakosi Hindu when I say all voters hate Pakosi Hindu they are lovers of what or they are um um pro uh, PPP uh, um, members. And I say pro PPP, uh, PPP members. They are out. They are in, they are they are into that party. Okay. They really like the party. But so if I say all voters hate PPP or Pakwe uh, uh, uh I've included even his lovers, people that really love him. I've included all of them in my statement. Okay. So that is how a lot like hypothesis. Uh, goose. Now let's look at a statistical hypothesis. When you say statistical, you understand what a statistic is. Uh, statistics. Ghana Statistical Agency. They comes. They usually comes with what? Statistics. Okay. They come. They come with what? Statistics. So they will tell you that oh, majority. Uh, Ninety percent of Ghanaians are HIV negative. Uh, twenty percent of Ghanaians are out COVID nineteen um, positive, and, and and it comes with what some statement like this. So when you say statistical hypothesis, it should it, 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 it's not different. Okay, it deals with what statistics. Statistics doesn't make inclusion of everything. Okay, with this one it has an exception. If it's talking about Ghanaians. Uh, it's talking about the unemployed uh, um, graduate. We do say every graduate is unemployed, okay? It will make reference to what? Uh, uh, a certain percentage of uh, graduates being unemployed. For example, it will say that 90% of graduates, Ghanaian graduates, are unemployed. It will say 100%. A, a, a statistics doesn't normally happen in that way. Just few instances. You only have some few instances whereby you get 100% data, and that one is not a statistic. Okay. So when you talk of what statistic, uh, statistical hypothesis, it is what a conf it is a confirmable statement that has an exception. Okay. It has an exception. If the law like has no exception, this one has what an exception. That is what, that is the percentage less than 100% and what, more than 0%. So any percentage that fall within 1 to 99.9% .9 is what, a statistical hypothesis. So 
you can make you can you can you can uh, continue with whatever statement you have. Twenty percent of Americans speak English. Twenty percent of Nigerians are corrupt. Ten uh, percent of accounts are caring. We see some things like this. They are all what um, law like so, sorry statistical hypothesis. They are statistical hypothesis. 80% of Nigerians hit, hit Tinabu. It is what? A law like, uh, uh, sorry, a, a statistical hypothesis. All, almost all virgins are afraid of what? Men. If you see something like almost, almost, it has what? It has made, uh, it has already made an exception. It didn't include everyone, almost. Or if you see something like majority, it is what? Statistical majority of um, Ghanaian parliament, uh, parliamentarians are, out, are, are against the LGBTQ law. You get it? It is what? A statistical. It's a statistical. Minority of these people are this. It is what? A statistical. That is all about statistical hypothesis now let's look at the predictive power of hypothesis so when you talk of a predictive power of hypothesis it is ability of a statement to say something is a ability of what a statement to say something about the future you know um, before you be able to say something about the future you must have some um, degree of certainty or some surety. Okay, I don't think you wake up to see something about the next election without having uh, or without doing any analysis. Okay, before you can talk about the 2024 election, it means you have you have gotten some experience, you have had some insight about the next election or your previous election. So when you are talking about what is going to happen in the future, it means you have some level of what? Experience. And that will actually motivate you to come out to talk about what will happen in the future. Okay? If Real Madrid and Chelsea are coming to play football, because of what? Your recent experience, eh, they met them twice and they scored Chelsea. So if Real Madrid is going to meet Chelsea in the future as a footballer or a, as, a, as a football fan, what you do is you, you can make prediction that, oh, this game, I predict that Madrid will score Chelsea because of what you experience. And, and these experiences or some of the statements you make about future, they are... Um, the statement we make are in future, they are in two folds. There are some that have high um, predictive power. If I say it has a high predictive power, um, its chances of occurring is very high. Okay, example is what I gave to you earlier about Real Madrid and Chelsea. Real Madrid and Chelsea um, having a match in the future. If we say Chelsea will beat Real Madrid, it has what? A low predictive power because in their previous uh, meetings, Madrid has scored Chelsea in all their previous meetings. For example, 2023, they met, they met twice and Madrid has scored Chelsea twice. So if you tell me that Chelsea is going to score Madrid um, next season, I would doubt you, okay? I wouldn't believe you if I'm to even uh, uh, bet on this one. I'll be very careful. Okay, because of what experience have gotten. The same way, um, so this one I, I say it has what a low predictive what power. But if I say Madrid is going to score Chelsea in their next meeting, it has what a high predictive power because something has happened before. Okay, they met them twice, they scored them. So it has what a high predictive power, and that is what we are coming to look. Let me give you a typical example. I'm, give you, I'm giving you two examples. Then we 
uh, uh, determine their predictive um, 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 how do you call it their predictive power of hypothesis whether they have a high or low predictive power every Saturday um, it has been raining at Gosso okay every Saturday it has been raining at Gosso another example is Legon um, okay, come out, uh, come out, um, how boys sometimes play football. Come out, come out, boys sometimes what play football. So, these two statements, if I, as a critical thinker, as if I ask you to analyze these two statements, what would you see? You could see that the first statement, I said, it has been raining every Saturday at what? Gosso. Okay? It has been raining every Saturday at Gosso. So if I come and tell you that this Saturday is going to rain at Gosso, you believe me. Or you believe me because it has been raining consistently. So this statement has what? A high predictive power because of what? Um, how it has been raining consistently at Gosso. So if I tell you not to go to farm on Saturday because it's going to rain, you will believe me because of what? Um, the record you gave to me. But if I tell you that today come out boys are going to play football, will you believe me? Because they've been playing football sometimes. They often, uh, sorry, they, they hardly play football. You say sometimes so. They hardly play football. It could be that even they play football once a month or um, once a semester so if you if with this statement it has what a low predictive power and that is all about a predictive power of hypothesis and in your exams expect something like this they can ask you to form a sentence and sentence and and determine it um it's what uh predictive power okay okay they can form they can ask you to form a sentence sentences that have what high predictive power powers and i think this one shouldn't be a problem to you so that is all about the predictive power of hypothesis so let's move to our next topic our next topic which is enumeration so when you talk of enumeration it is an inductive argument and you know inductive argument already i've already told you that inductive argument um is is what an argument um, if what um, it gives you inductive argument gives you um, more evidences to believe that the conclusion will be what true okay it will give you can give you a lot of evidences instances to believe that the conclusion will be true but that doesn't mean the conclusion is what true the conclusion can be false despite you having true premises the conclusion the conclusion can be false or um, the conclusion can deny the premise that is all about inductive argument. And um, for enumeration, it falls part or it's it, it also what? Part of what? Inductive and inductive argument. So let's look at it. When you talk of enumeration, we say that it's a type of inductive argument that uses verifiable statements or a particular statement as what? Premise to support a general statement. Or confirmable statement hypothesis or hypothesis as what a conclusion so what it does is it uses what a particular statement to support a general statement mm. as what its conclusion that is all about what enumeration it is what call enumeration because the conclusion is based on what accumulated number of instances or evidences to support it it is what called enumeration because the conclusion is based on accumulated number of instances. So you can get more than 10 premises in a particular statement. And with this one, you, you need no one to tell you that it is enumeration. Okay? It is based on what? Accumulated number of what? Instances. Accumulated number of instances. The accumulated number of instances that would determine 
which type of hypothesis will be the conclusion okay so looking at the number of instances that you get in your statement it is that one that will determine the hypothesis you use for it if it, it, it goes in a law like way mm, if all the uh, instances are in a law like or are in a law like way the conclusion should what should be a law like what statement okay the conclusion should be a law like statement or if if the instances they all point out to one thing or they all agree to one thing the conclusion should be what a, a general statement please i hope i'm making sense the conclusion should be what a general statement if i say um, i give you an example of uh, yao's, yao's experience in relationship i say you dated a, a first lady and the lady cheated on him he dated a second lady she also cheated on him he dated a third lady she cheated on him he dated the fourth lady she also cheated on him he dated the fifth lady she also cheated on him so yao has had five relationship experience and all ended in what uh, i mean it it they, it ended in what a bad way okay the partner ended up cheating on him so with this experience yao is having yao has every right to make what a law like conclusion okay if i say a law like conclusion i've already explained it to you that a statement that what, that um um has what no exception okay statement that has what no exception it includes it it makes it includes everyone in the statement so with the five experience he has had he has not dated even a single partner and the person has been faithful to him before all his relationship experience is what it ends in cheating 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 like that okay so yeah if you are is making the conclusion about women what do you think you will say do you think you will say some women are are faithful no it will it will make a statistical um uh, i mean hypothesis or as what a conclusion he will make his conclusion uh, a statistical hypothesis as what a conclusion he will he will be what he will use a law like as a what a law like statement as what his conclusion he will use a statistical hypothesis to make his conclusion or draw his conclusion so he will say that all ladies are cheat please i hope I'm, I'm i'm making sense here all ladies are cheat you assuming you have had five working experience all the companies you join you met a votarian boss and in all they treated you well mm? the first votarian boss that you met treated you well second one treated you well third one treated you well you will see that all votarians are all good because of what the experience you have gotten so this is what statement with what law like hypothesis as conclusion you know a law like hypothesis already so i say all okay all votarians are all good that is what we say that's what we call what enumeration that's what we call what enumeration so that is that is the the whole thing and um assuming i i went to five different schools mm, and these schools the headmasters were all um females okay the way i met a, a mistress female uh, mistress okay and this mistress three of them treated me well but two treated me bad do you think i'll come i'll come and say that all female uh, mistress are bad no some have been good to me so with this one it will be um uh, what i will conclude with what a statistical hypothesis okay so i will say 80 percent uh, sorry with this one i will say 60 percent of female mistress are good because what they are five and the five three treated me well so each person uh, each of them represent what 20 percent each of them represent 20 percent making 100 percent so i say that out of um um the mistresses in the world 
60% of them are good, but the remaining 40% are very bad based on what the experience or the accumulated number of instances I have. So with the law-like um, enumeration, with what? Law-like hypothesis as a conclusion, it makes an exception, okay? It makes an exception. Let me let me give you an example. Um, it's about a, a certain lady. It's about ten ladies who um went to abort their pregnancies. Okay, these ten ladies. The first one aborted her pregnancy, and she died within three months. Another one committed. She died within three months. Fifth one, uh, third. Four, fifth, they all commit. Uh, they all went to abort their pregnancy, and they died within three months. The sixth one uh, went to abort her pregnancy, and she survived. The the seventh one uh, uh, went to abort her pregnancy, and she survived. Eighth one um, aborted the pregnancy and died within three. Uh, the third month. Okay, um, the ninth one aborted her pregnancy. And she also died within three months. The tenth person went to abort her pregnancy and she survived. So with this one, we have um, out of the ten, out of the ten um, of, of what? The ten people who committed abortion, eh, the, uh, uh, seven of them survived. Okay? Seventy of them survive 70 percent so if seven of them survive then it will represent what 70 percent okay but three sorry seven of them died so that will those that died uh, they represent what 70 percent and those that survived are uh, only three so they represent what 30 percent so this one i have every right per my experience i have every right to say that 70 percent of ladies who commit abortion die after what three months they die after what three months or um seventy percent of ladies that will commit abortion um i mean out of ten people that will commit abortion seventy percent will what, die that is my experience but you should know this my experience is different from you the kind of people i meet are different from you so if You've been dating and it has not been successful and someone has been dating and has been successful. You can't just go and then accuse a person or ask the person that she should or he or she should not stop. Okay? You are not meeting the good people. The fact that you are not meeting good guys doesn't mean there are no good guys in the world. No. It's a fallacy. It's never true. If you are not meeting good guys, that doesn't mean that guys are good. There are some guys with what? Genuine intention. So the moment you dated Kwame and you failed, you dated yeah, or you dated uh, a, a pastor or whosoever, and, and it failed, you can't conclude that uh, all guys are wicked. No, all, all guys are cheat. The fact that you dated and you cheated on you, that doesn't mean that they are out. It could be that you yourself, you, you, you are the cause of all the, the challenges. You know, in, um, let, me take you from, let me take you to sociology. We have something we call what? Sociological imagination sociological imagination okay someone would do something based on what um the kind of experience he has received or he would do something uh, because of what uh, certain circumstances okay if you see some ladies in the street involving themselves in this uh, um, i mean hookup issues and 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 this uh, a shower lifer uh, you can't just conclude that these ladies are are, are just um they, they they are bad or something like that you know some of them are good do you know that but the issue is that um situational factors are part it could be that the person the person has what an important uh thing to attend to okay but because of what he is she is going to there's no one no one is willing to help her so she decided to what, do that thing for maybe a week or just a month 
to gather that money and pay. So if you see that person, if you are not careful, you conclude that she's what a bad person. But when you draw closer and you try to analyze the things she has been doing or what she has been going through, she will tell you her experience and you will see that, yes, it could be that this person, uh, uh, this person, um, uh, experience in relationship hasn't been good. It has it all bad. So she has had bad experiences, and that is how come she's doing what that she's doing. Because he did any time she did, it has not been uh, uh, I mean successful. And that is what uh, if somebody commits um, suicide right now, if you are not careful, you you blame him for 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 taking his life. But in the real life situation. The person did that. Could be the pressure that he is facing, or the pressure the wife is putting on him, made him what? Commit adultery. Uh, sorry, the about um, the suicide. Do you get it? So that is all about sociological imagination. The way people behave, the way they do. Okay. So it is it is somehow linked to this one. It is somehow linked to this one. So the fact that. Ladies that you've been dating has been, been, been running away or they've been dating your friends and they end up dumping you. That doesn't mean there's no good ones among them. So always you have to what, pay attention to these things. That is all about the enumeration. So the number of uh, experiences, I, 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 as I told you, my experience is different from you. My experience, my experience about um, um, my job experience is different from you, okay? Uh, the experience I've received in my last three jobs is different, okay? And your own is different. Yes, maybe you were treated good, uh -huh, but my mine is different from yours. So if I'm to talk about managers, the way I'll talk about managers will be different from the way you will also talk about managers. I, I, I hope I'm right. So that is all about our enumeration. So if the conclusion, you realize if you even get one premise that do not coincide with uh, if you get a one premise that what does not coincide with whatever premises that you are making i don't mean like i said okay i've been uh i, I have um three to uh five children okay the first one is is, is playing football second is playing football third is playing football uh, so the fifth one that that, that is coming Okay, the fifth one is not playing football. With this one, I can't say all my sons are footballers, right? The five of them, no. It is four that are playing football. So you can't say all my sons are footballers. Yeah, there's one among them who is not a footballer. So with this one, your conclusion should be a, a statistical, okay? But if all of them, I don't mean all of them are playing football, then you can say that all my children are playing football. This one becomes what a law like. That is all about the enumeration and there are some enumeration that comes with what uh that comes with with um um a statistical hypothesis as what a premise okay as a premise it comes with what a statistical hypothesis as a premise so that it was that's what you should pay attention to so in a sample example is in a sample of what ten percent of uh in a sample of Ten, uh, ten parents who contracted the coronavirus. Seven of the uh, sorry, in the sample of ten patients who contracted the coronavirus, seven of the patients died within two weeks. And therefore, seven percent of persons of all human beings who contract coronavirus will die. Okay, so this one it comes with what a statistical hypothesis as what a premise. But say seven percent of the people that contracted coronavirus what they died within three weeks. So therefore, seven percent of pers all human beings who contract coronavirus will die. That is what enumeration. Another one is um two uh, two hundred samples of water taken f at random from many sites all along with what we just we just choose concentration of what corella. Hence, water in wager is not safe for drinking. So this one too, it is what it is. Um, and this one is uh, is also enumeration. But you know, 
um, we can't give you all the instances here. We can't give you all the premises. Okay, that 200 factory, the samples they went, they, we can't all, we can't tell you, okay, we went to the, the you know, you can't read it. So, they concluded, they said that 200 samples, okay, so you know that it's 200 premises we are talking about that were taken at random from many sites, many sites. Eh? It could be that they picked some from uh, uh, um Water Factory, they picked some from Yamansa Water Factory, they picked some from J uh, Factory, different, different places. And at the end of the day, after testing the water, they realized that all those waters they, uh, they picked are not safe for consumption. So if a health personnel or a health service personnel comes out to say that water from Weja municipality is not safe for drinking, it's, it's, it's true because of what, what they did, because of the report he has at hand, and that will make him make such statement. So before someone make, make a law-like statement or a statistical statement, you should know the experience he has received, like I explained to you earlier. Well, that is how it is. The Ghana population census, eh? they count people, but me, eh, they've not even come to my home before. But you'll be there, they come and tell you that Ghanaians are, <laughs> Ghanaians are 32 million. Eh? Me, they've never counted me before. How do they do it? So they, they use one person. Even they come to your home, they ask, okay, how many people are here? So just one person over there will be able to tell the number of people that live in that specific household. So at the long run, you'll be thinking you've not been counted. But you've been counted, okay? Um, the Department of, Department of Political Science, of which I am also a member of, the University of Ghana, Department of Political Science, when, um, whenever, they are, uh, making, whenever they are making analysis, mm, whenever they are making analysis, last two years in, in a previous election, 2006, they came out to say that President uh, Mahama will lose. And yes, he lost the election. 2000 and, sorry, 2016, right? 2020, they came out to say that Ganado uh, retained his seat as president. Yes, it happened. Okay? Why? Uh, how did they get the report? So when they go to the market, they interview, they pick about, let's say, like uh, 100 market women. They ask them about their view on the status quo, the current situation. What is actually happening in the country? Are you okay with what is happening in the country? Then the market women would express their displeasure. Oh, the government is not really happiness. Okay, one person has said it. They went to another person. The woman would say, oh, Nanado is trying, but the economy is very, very, things are not really well. We are not able to buy things. And you know, so they look at all these things. They go to another person. They say, oh, Nana is trying. Nana is so... At all, all the interviews that they are granting, uh, the surveys, they, they, they take note of all of them. So they look at the number of people they interviewed at Makola Market. They are 200. The 200 are supporting, uh, 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 are in support of what? Nanado. And, and sorry, um, one, 120 of them are supporting Nanado. And 10% of them are in favor of the opposition. Or let's say, um, uh, 80, the 80%, remaining 80% are supporting, 80 people are supporting what? The opposition. So they do that thing now. So at the end of the day, they put everything together. They say that this person is going to win the election. And it will be true. You get it? And they don't do it at one place. So they go to different, different departments, the government institutions and other places to conduct the survey. So that is how it is. And let's look at um, the causal reason. But I will only focus on one topic the next time i'll release a video on the remaining topics and the causal reasoning then we 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 see how the causal reasoning and then the that will be my next video so expect it but this one i'm going to treat um one topic and the causal reasoning so we have um so when you say a causal reasoning it is concerned with what studying the justification of what causal claims studying the justification of what causal claims. So before something happens, um, it, it, nothing just happened like that, okay? Okay, before something happens, there is always a cause for it. Mm? If uh, an if accident happened today, eh, 
if if you go through it, you could see that there there were so many causes or so many things that what resulted in the accident. So that is what we call what, causal reasoning. So after the incident, what do you think it happened? And this one favors the the CIDs, the military men, and what have you. So they go out. They they know these things. Okay. Some of them are aware of these things. So they go out and carry a comprehensive research. Okay, it could be that the driver was, was, was drunk. That is one of the causes. The driver, um, the driver uh, setting car crossing, and he couldn't what, control uh, the car, and at the end of the day, he resulted in the accident. So all these things. So we look at it. Now we are coming to look at what the causal uh, reasoning is. They are different sense of what cause and this sense of causes are the proximate cause we have um a causal agent we have um, necessary condition and then sufficient condition so these are the topics i want us to look at before i bring the discussion to an end let's look at the proximate cause when you say proximate we see something is approximate mm. it is approximately to or it, uh, it, it, yeah, it is approximately to um, uh, 90%, which means that it is closer to what? 90%. Yes. So the closest, so when you hear something, uh, uh, something approximate, uh, you what? The closest. So the approximate cause is what? The cause event nearest to the time and place, the occurrence, under investigation, so the the causal claim is what. Sorry, the proximate cause is what is the causal event nearest in time and place to what the occurrence under investigation. Okay, so before something happens, look at what the nearest what. The nearest cause, okay. The nearest what events in events in time and also what place. To the what to the occurrence under investigation. Okay, the one that is what closest, the one that is closest becomes what the proximate cause. Example, um, a certain guy died this morning, okay, and after doing our investigation, realized that the guy was sick. Mm, he was suffering from um, hepatitis B. That is one of what the cause. Also, we also realized that when he was going to the hospital, when the when the ambulance came to pick him, there was a traffic, eh? There was a, a traffic congestion on the road. So it is also one of the cause. And another cause is that um, when they were about um, taking him from the ambulance to the hospital. He fell down, okay. He, he fell down. So the moment they sent him to um, his bed, it didn't take. It didn't last. It didn't take more than three minutes, and he died. So with this one, you see, you have to look at the nearest cause or what you think it could be the main reason why he died. I would say the last cause. You know, yes. The hepatitis B is a cause, but you know the disease has been there not just today, and the person didn't die. Okay, the traffic, the traffic too is is also a cause, but that one alone wouldn't. Die. Yes, it, it could be that the person would have maybe survived, or yeah, you would have survived for some time. But what really, what could be the main the the proximate cause here? What is the proximate co uh, the proximate cause here? Is what the the, the, the fall, okay? After f uh, falling on the ground, you know it could what it, it added more pains to what the person was going through, and resulted in that incident. So the person died. So when you are looking for the causal claim, uh, sorry, the proximate cause, we say that. It is what the fall that really what caused his death. His death, okay. That is that is what a causa sorry a proximate what cause. That is the nearest one. Okay, so um, 
another one is that a person was shot mm, on his chest. Okay, a person was shot shot on his what? His chest. And after taking him to the hospital, um, within some period, his heart stopped breathing for ten minutes, and as a result of that, he died. So if you are asking about the proximate cause, I would say that his heart would stop, be, uh, I mean, breathing for 10 minutes because that is the main cause of us, is death. Is death. Because um, the shot is one of the reasons, but that one isn't the proximate cause, okay? The proximate cause is what? The breathing. The moment he starts stop breathing for 10 minutes, it means you have to die. And that is what cause is what? His death. So that is the proximate cause. Let's look at a causal agent. When we talk of cause, causal agent, is a cause attributed to what? An individual or a corporate entity with the intention or motive or motive for bringing about the effect. So it always has to do with what? A person or a corporate entity, organization. Organizations usually set rules. And these rules, end, uh, in one way or the other way, end up what? Uh, affecting the people that are within the organization. People's action, in one way or the other way, end up affecting their colleagues. Okay? If my mother, if, if, if your, your son eh, dies, and... and, and the person doesn't know how to communicate. He come and tell you that, oh, your son has passed on. He come and say, oh, your son is dead. Hmm? And you also um, collapse right now. Who will we blame? Eh? Is it your son or who? It's the person that carried the information. And that is what we say, what? A causal agent. The causal agent. Yes, I was fit. I was strong. Nothing happened to me. Until you came to communicate that if, uh, message to me, and that that's what what brought all these things. So you are what the causal agent. Assuming you are going to write your exams, mm? you are preparing to write your exams, and I, I think you have about you have about three um, three hours to start. Or let me let me put it in this way. You have only one hour to start. Once you were there, a call came in. You pick up the call, and someone tells you that oh, your 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 husband has had an accident, or your your wife has had an accident, or even uh, a person closest to you has had an accident. If you go to the examination hall and you are not able to write anything. At the end of the day, who do we blame? Do you blame the person that died or the person that uh, has a problem or the one that communicated to you? Is the person that didn't you know how to what, handle you, he would have let you what, write your exams before communicating to you. So all these things are very, very important. So this also is an advice if you are dealing with people, especially those that have hypertension. Eh? You deal when you are dealing with them. You know how to communicate to them. There are some ways if you are to even use proverb, use it. That's why you are in this university. But instead of saying the person is dead, you can say, oh, the person has kicked a bucket. It will shock you psychologically. It, it has a way. It will definitely influence your decision. You, it will pain you. But before you sit down and process it, that, okay, kick the bucket, what is it? Before you process it, you know, your heart, it, 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 you know, it will take time to process it. And it, it will shock you like someone say, oh, he's dead. You get it? It will shock you when you're having, having a, a heart attack or you're having a hypertension. You can also die or collapse because of this thing. Mostly when you are carrying information, you know how you carry it. Uh, example, another example about the causal agent is um, you are having exams, the same exams, and you, you go to your school platform. Um, especially this critical uh, thinking exams you're about, you're about to write, and you go to your class. Uh, sorry, you are you are there, you are there, and then the course rep tells you that 
you you see a message on the platform, a call course will come to communicate to you that oh this exam is um the time for the exam has been changed from twelve to nine o'clock. Okay. Twelve to nine o'clock. So this twelve to nine o'clock you you are also driving. Mm? And you have you have seen something like this. Which we need to speed up, okay, in order to meet the the the, the time, in order to be there on time. Or if you get accident on the road, we will say that as a course rep or the institution, the university that has caused your death because if they could have let you stick to the normal time, it wouldn't have happened. So that is all about a causal agent, either the institution, the corporate uh, entity or the person involved. That is what the causal agent. Let's look at the necessary condition. Necessary condition is what? It's a condition that is necessary in the sense that the effect cannot occur without without what the condition without the condition. Let me give you an example. The victim died as his heart stopped pumping blood for more than ten minutes. Okay, he died as his heart stopped pumping blood for ten minutes. You know. The person was alive until his heart would stop pumping blood uh, for more than what? 10 minutes. And with this one, with this one, it, it is what? It is the necessary condition. The necessary condition is that his heart stop pumping blood for more than what? 10 minutes. Uh, uh, let, me, let me put it in this way for you to understand it. So without the heart... Uh, if uh, with this one, uh, without the heart, um, if the heart could have been pumping blood, it wouldn't have died. Okay, so the uh, the heart pumping blood is necessary for the person to what, live. Without without it, you will die. Example is another example is you are a lady. You are there thinking about yourself. Certain guy comes to propose to you that he wants to be with you. You agreed, then you decided to live together. For um, so so it is love. So first of, first one of the causes that you 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 decided to be with a person because of what love. Okay, so you had an affair with the person, and some months later you realize that you are pregnant. Okay. Here, what do you think it will be the, ne the necessary condition? I say that necessary condition is the necessary condition is that um, is the sense um, okay the necessary condition is necessary in the sense that the effect cannot occur without the condition. It is necessary; it won't occur. So, do you think it is the uh, the love that brought about the pregnancy or the affair they had? That is that brought about the pregnancy. It is what the affair because without the affair, the lady would have uh, wouldn't have what, gotten pregnant. Do you get the, the the necessary condition now? Without the affair, the lady would have still be what a normal person. She wouldn't have what gotten pregnant. So w you, if you tell me yes, they had the keys, the the. They were in love, but that one alone is not enough for the person to get pregnant. Until what? They had an affair. Till there was a penetration. So this one becomes what? The necessary condition. The necessary condition is the affairs they had. So that is it. And there's a last one that is called sufficient condition. condition. Sufficient condition is um, whenever the condition is pres present, the effect is also what? present. Whenever the condition is present, the effect is also what present. Example is the man died as what a gunshot wound near his what heart. The gun died by a gun uh, a gunshot wound near his heart. You know, with this one, when you say it is what a sufficient condition, without the without it, the thing was still what okay, okay. The wound, yes, there was a wound near his heart, but that one isn't the reason why he died, okay? 
That one isn't the reason why he died. Do, do, you, do you get it? Do you get the sufficient condition? Without it, yes, it is one of the effects too. It is one of the causes. But that is not the necessary condition. So it is one of the cause. Okay? One of the causal claims. But that, it, it, that without it, the thing will still okay. Without the wound, yes, it will still okay. A, example is, um, example is, um, let me, let me, let me give you this example. Barcelona and Real Madrid is playing football. So as they were playing football, Lionel Messi passed ball to Luis Suarez. And Suarez um, kicked the ball. Okay. And he scored. So with this one, when you are talking of the sufficient condition, the sufficient condition is the pass Lionel Messi gave to Luis Suarez. Okay. It is, yes, it is one of the reasons why uh, the goal came. But that is not the main reason. The main cause that, that is which is the necessary condition is what the the pa, the the ball that what Luis Suarez what kick or the shot, eh? That is what caused the goal. So that one becomes what the necessary condition, and the pass line of Messi gave to Luis Suarez becomes what the sufficient condition. So that is all about the four sense of what cause. That is. The proximate cause, the causal agent, and then the the causal agent, the necessary condition, and then the sufficient condition. So that is all about this. So in my next video, I'm going to take you through J. L. Smith's method of causal reasoning, the um, the errors in cause and effect reasoning, and then other topics. So. See you in my next video. And if you are finding anything difficult, you can you can message me and I will try and explain it to you. Thank you all and God bless you. Please, if you have not subscribed, do well to subscribe to my my channel and share it with your friends too. Thank you.